The deadliest destination. The deadliest city. Guns. Terror. Roadside bombs. Improvised explosive device. Refugees. A place of no luck. That's what they called it. Only the fittest survived. Not a single building without a gun hole. This is Somalia. Could the world simply look on? Caught in the adult world, a world of war and anarchy, was Rahma Abdullah Hussein. Born in it, lived with it, had it every day, the sound of the gun. The world could not look away forever. There was Uganda where the response to Pan-Africanism was part of her ideology. It took the intervention of Uganda for the world to take notice. It took the intercession and involvement of this nation for Africa to speak up. An African country standing up to tackle the challenges of another African country. On the 20th of February 2007, the UN authorized the African Union to deploy peacekeepers under the Security Council Resolution 1744 in Wotan, Mogadishu, which was renewed later in 2012 under UN Resolution No. 2036. Hope was reborn. Uganda joined by Burundi, Djibouti and later Kenya made the difference. The world needed to put an end to terror. Rahma, at 14, knew that she had to run to safety every day. The firstborn in a family of five, her father left them, leaving her mother Madina Ibrahim as the sole provider. Rahma in P5 went to school in Asulgan Primary School in Madina District, Somalia, with the sounds of the gun in normal routine, accompanying her to and from school almost every day. One day on her way from school, Rahma was shot. At 14 years, Rahma became yet another victim of gun rule. Her innocence shattered. One of her friends was not lucky. She did. For seven months, Rahma lived with a bullet that hit her through the back to her neck. Where could she find help in a place where nothing functioned except guns and lawlessness? Rahma's Somalia was in all, simply a geographical expression. But lawlessness has no place in this century. And in Mogadishu, despair was replaced with hope. Hope for Rahma too. With the African mission in Somalia came an anticipation of law, order and normalcy. With Uganda People's Defense Forces serving under Amisom came a new lease of life. Rahma had found hope, had found faith. She could live just another day. In June 2012, seven months after Rahma's shooting, UPDF doctors Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Asier and Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Ambrose Oyiko, all serving under Amisom, undertook an operation to remove the foreign object from Rahma's neck. The bullet is believed to have been shot from a PK gun. The sternum is just around here. This is where it ends, and the bullet is just behind it. So what we did, this is a part of a lateral view. Uh -huh. You can see the sternum is here, and the bullet is just lying below it. The sternum is this bone here, in the center where the ribs come and unite. It was just behind it. We can say it was a retro sternum, just at the superior end, that is the upper end of the sternum, behind it. And it was pointing towards the, the airway. So when he breathes and when he swallows food, because it pushes the airway forward and he will always feel a lot of discomfort. It is worse when she coughs. The girl was hit about seven months ago. The bullet came from the back and got lodged. It came actually from the shoulder and got lodged somewhere here in the suprasternal notch. She had been attempting to seek 
uh, help from various places, but because of the sensitivity of this area, I think many people were, were shying away from helping her. Yeah, when, when we first saw her really, we also were like uh, trying to tell her, can't you go maybe to Nairobi or somewhere and, and they help you from there? But uh, she didn't have anybody who could of course help her do that. So after really looking at her with all the trouble, because that thing was causing problems, she couldn't swallow well. Whatever she would be eating, she would be feeling pain. So when we considered all the trouble she was going through, we felt maybe we could help her. Because we, we had to do thorough investigations, we did x-rays so that we could locate the exact position of the bullet, so that it could guide us when we were going into it. Of course, there is no operation that is easy, but uh, we had expected actually this one to be quite difficult. It wasn't that difficult and it wasn't that easy. But somehow we managed to get the bullet out without any bad incidents. Yeah, we managed to get it out without any bad incident on the, on the girl. And we expect that she's going to get better. Fifteen-year-old Rahma could finally smile. Has she forgiven these extremists, the Al Shabaab that inflicted so much pain on her? With Uganda leading the way, Mogadishu is now peaceful. Little boys who had been indoctrinated into throwing bombs could now throw boys. Women could now sing of their freedoms. Mogadishu today, a city reawakening. This is Rahmas Mogadishu, where the sound of the hammer and grader has replaced the sound of the gun. This is a place where Rahma wants to grow, a place that she can freely call home, a place where the sun sets by the Indian Ocean. Mogadishu reawakening. This is Rahma's story.